just from your hard work. Um, you know, a lot of times we go to graduate school and we're just in it to finish it. And because of all the writing that um, you do in graduate school, um, if you're interested, it's really good to um, figure out where you can publish and, and get the most out of the, all the hard writing that you do. Um, our agenda is not, doesn't look very long. So um, we'll get you out of here for sure in the time space, but maybe a little earlier. So to begin with, um, I'm assuming you're here because you want to publish. And um, just for a minute, if you will, unmute yourself and just tell us, what do you think good writing involves? And I can start with a good topic, one that's interesting to not just yourself, but many other people. Any other ideas? Probably something that everyone on each level can understand and read. Okay, yeah. Something that's new to the literature, maybe filling in gaps. And a lot of times it's just because you're passionate about it. Um, if you're if you write about something you're passionate about, you're going to make it interesting. And then um, you've got a mentor, uh, your advisor or your um, chair who will uh, make sure that it is good writing. All right. You, first of all, you need to develop a publishing plan for success. Um, which includes taking a proactive stance. And when I say that, develop your writing skills, write every chance that you get, um, develop your pu publishing knowledge, which means decide what your, you know, whatever your topic is, decide what journals support that topic and would be interested in publishing something on that topic. And, you know, there are times when you're writing that you just don't feel like doing, you don't want to re research, you don't want to write, you don't want to add to the, the lit review, you don't. So days when you know you need to write, but you just can't find where you want to be, start looking up journals. And uh, of course, the research you've done has, you know, they're from journals that are, um, have that topic published. So just start making you a list of um, journals that um, you may contact and submit your um, writing to. It's always a good thing to collaborate with others, either people who are studying, researching the same um, topic, or collaborate with your mentors. Create organizing systems um, before you're through with your um, degree, you're going to have many, many, many um, research articles that you've either printed or either on your computer somewhere. So be sure you're putting them um, in an organized fashion so that you can go back and find them. Um, I was still from the old school and I printed all mine out and I still do. Um, but I do use Mendeley for my uh, e electronic articles. And then I do have bags and boxes and things with um, the articles that are on different topics. And I go so far as I write in the margins. Did I like the um, method? Did I like the, um, how, you know, maybe the, how they came about their population or maybe it's the type of research that I really thought fit something I was looking at. So I always make notes and I know you can do that electronically too. And then the last thing that we don't like to talk about and think about, but prepare for and accept rejection, because if you're going to try to publish at some point, you will be rejected. And you can ask anybody who's published prior before you, they have too. And so the best thing to do is when you um, get feedback from someone, but they say, yeah, but, you know, this is not what we want to, to publish right now, then don't get disheartened. Look at their feedback, use their feedback, and then find somewhere else to publish. 
it takes practice. Writing, like anything, takes practice. Um, it takes a proactive attitude about publishing. You can't just sit back and work on and, you know, and have no idea where you want to publish it to. Um, you need to look up in a, a slide later of their publishing percentages. There's just a lot to do about publishing and um, your mentor can help you with this too. So don't think that writing is a, a lone event. When you have chairs and mentors and, you know, faculty in, in your different areas, they are here to help you. So it's don't be alone. Um, talk to someone. Um, and other good things to do, volunteer to write, write newsletters, write in special editions, search the internet for people looking for calls for proposals, and sign up for that. You never know um, how far you'll go until you start trying. So volunteer to write, volunteer to review to journals. Um, you can contact any journal, any journal, and tell them that you're interested in being on their review team. And um, chances are you'll get an article to review pretty soon after you fill out all the information. Because from what I hear and from what I know from my own journal, um, we're always looking for people to review, people that um, have experience in that um, topic and um, want to do it. Ask editors what they're looking for. Um, I didn't know to do this when I first started out writing, but um, now that I'm an editor, um, I'd much rather get an email from someone saying, listen, I'm writing about this, this, and this, um, and I was just wondering if you'd be interested, if this is something that goes along with what you're going to be publishing soon, or if it goes along with what your journal is looking for. Um, it's a lot easier to say no now than to, for you to get into the process and you know leave it with them for two or three months and then get back that they're not interested or then get back a lot of you know this long um, editorial type um, letter that, that has picked through everything and then only to say, and this really wasn't what we were looking for. So the good thing is to ask them early. Once you've identified maybe your top three journals that you want to publish in, send a, find out who the editor is and send a letter to them. Um, once you've identified your journal, start reading research from that journal. And um, Talk, you know, read read others people's writing, especially from the journal that you're wanting to publish in, just to see. Okay, this is how I need to organize it. These are catchphrases that are big right now, and um, I, you know, these are some topics that I need to um, publish or make sure I cover. Consider what's missing in the literature and find your niche. This is really big. Um, you know, there's a lot of literature out there, but if you're looking at something and when you're going to find others who are in that, looking in that area, if you don't find it a lot, or if you find um, differences in what you're finding, then that might be a niche that you're, you and your research can fill. So again, a publishing plan means to be proactive and to really start looking um, what's out there. Um, Google, you can Google, um, you can, for special issues or book chapters, people are always publishing um, propose, um, calls for proposals for either books or articles in journals. And so start looking for them and see where they're, where they are and get, you know, you know how you can get um, certain things sent to your email. Do that so that you can keep up with it and be ready to publish when you have your um, paper and you are ready. Develop your writing skills, learn to write for the publication, um, look at the scope of the journal, who the journal is read by, and um, make sure you're writing to the journal 
journals or audience. Um, con consider your class projects. And that's what it sounds like a lot of you are doing. When you spend a lot of time researching and finding out um, things just for a class project, those are certainly worth publishing. You've got to decide, was your class project research-based? Did you really, do you have a um, lit review and um findings and, you know, all the different things for a structured article, or do you want to um, submit a, uh, uh, just a paper on, and I'm trying to think, oh, it's, it's left my mind. I had it on the tip of my tongue and it's gone. Um, but a, a paper that's just um, a concept paper, there it is, um, is will yours be a concept paper? Do you have a topic and you've researched a lot on it, and this is what you found, and you just want to share what you know about it. Um, a lot of journals now, research journals, are including a certain percent of concept papers. And I know that because, um, again, the journal that I'm an editor of, we have just started including con concept papers and book reports. So another way to get start practicing your writing is um, books that you've um, read and enjoyed in your field. You can do a book report on it and submit it. Find out which journal um, supports book reports in that in your topic, and send a book report to. Um, the, the journal. So there are a lot of different things that you can do. It doesn't just have to be a dissertation or a thesis, although those are really easy and no, are easy to make your articles from. And note that any di dissertation or thesis, you should get two to four articles out of. So as you're writing and researching and publishing your um, findings, start thinking about how can I make this into um, a published article, something that people would like to read. And a lot of times people do this through their research questions and they um, publish their re you know, research question one. It's all inclusive and you can publish a paper on it. Other times um, you just you ended up finding things. Your findings were so vast and included things that uh, maybe you were and weren't expecting and you can write on your findings. But ask others to um, critique your writing. That's the one in orange. But I would, if you have so, your, your mentor, um, your chair, th those are all people who are perfectly willing and able to critique your writing before you send it to the journal. And um, that would certainly be something that I would recommend you do. Um, I already said to volunteer to write um, on another slide. Also, university competitions um, and think, you know, you can get a part of writing. It doesn't have to be that you're publishing right now. You could be, you could, um, uh, be a reviewer for conference proposals. There are all types of things that you can do to in uh, better your writing. And then one of those things is by reading other people's writing. Um, also, there are several books about writing, um, how to write um, on blogs and things in other online formats, um, how to write books, how to um, make an article in, article in 12 weeks, I think is a book that I have. So there are a lot of writing that can help you. I mean, a lot of books that can help you with your writing. And then take writing courses um, or go to writing, cl writing clinics or the writing center at CSU. All of those things can help better prepare you. Um, collaborate and co-write with a seasoned author. Again, that's where your mentor or chair is. Um, ask them, you know, since they are your uh, mentor, you, you know, this is something I'd like to do. And how can I um, co-write with you? Generally, if you're publishing an article, you cannot go wrong with the classic format. Introduction, a lit review, the methodology, findings or discussion, um, your limitations, delimitations, and then future research. So this is the general classic format that um, if you're shooting for an article, you can um, start off with this and then look at the articles in the journal to see if they include anything else or if they have it in a different order. Develop your publishing knowledge. 
Um, and this is something that I would really recommend is um, while you're working on your paper or working on your thesis or working on your dissertation, find conferences. And usually there are some local conferences not too far away that you could go to and present what you're doing. And a lot of conferences like the one I have um, in parentheses, SRCEA is one that I'm um, a big proponent of. It's a regional um, conference. Um, and they uh, have they uh, they have a big graduate student influence in their conferences, and so the graduate students can come and they can talk about what they're um, researching and get feedback from the audience. So you don't have to wait until you have a published article to go and start presenting. There are are some conferences where you can go to, and they um, they help you and give suggestions and feedback that is valuable to the young writers. Become familiar with potential journals on your work area, certainly, and then there are a lot of different websites that talk about journals and tell you their publishing rates, and Cabell is one of them. Um, ask your um, chair uh, about access to Cabell. Books and series, calls around topics, um, annuals. There are a lot of different things that you can look up and find that they're publishing and they're wanting people to write to. And so look for something that you think your topic fits in. And then create a reference file of places where you might submit. And then certainly once you do start submitting, keep references and notes, maybe a folder for each place that you submit to so that the next time you're ready to submit, you'll have some, you'll kind of know what they're looking for and um, you'll know um, what you need to do to be successful in that place. Um, here is um, an example of a publishing list. Um, again, I'm in educational leadership. So here are some journals that I write for. And um, I also review for these because it's good to review articles coming into the journals that you're thinking about publishing in. But another really important thing about creating a publishing list is to the percentages that are on the right hand side. Some like EAQ, um, only publish six to 10% of the people of the articles that come to them. So what that tells you is that, you know, this is a big name in journals and they get a lot of articles submitted to them. So that might not be the first one you choose. Whereas um, the one that says Academy of Educational Leadership Journal, it has like a 30% um, they, they publish 30% of the articles that come to them. So um, that would be probably the better one to start with. So you need to understand um, the public, you know, how they, how different article, our journals publish articles so that you don't um, maybe, I mean, I'm not, I don't, would not say don't, submit to one that is very low, like six to 10%, but you might not want to do that the first time. Or if you do that, then if you don't get published in it, then you won't feel so bad because you realize that only six to 10% of the people who submit actually get published. Um, and then here is an example of Cabell, um, a publication from Cabell. And you notice that um, I I'm looking at in their, the E's and you see that a lot of those are for educational leadership and administration or management, different things that would be um, something that I would write to. And then I can look over to the right and see the acceptance rate. And um, I, again, zero to 10 might not be where you want to begin, um, but good to, in the middle to the right hand side, that would um, be a safe bet for your first article. Another thing to do is to collaborate with people you trust. Again, um, your, your chair, your uh, lead professor, 
Um, and then maybe um, some people you're already working in groups with, you're in a group, you're doing this project, you're writing this uh, paper on it. Well, why not get it published? And when you're writing with other people, though, make sure that there's an agreement as to who's going to be in the first author before you submit it. Um, so there won't be any um, arguments or hurt feelings on that. Um, find mentors who will write and ask them to guide you and share their writing and publishing secrets with you. <clears throat> Again, everyone who writes has a story. And so um, a good thing to do is to talk to your um, mentors or professors and find out what they do, who they write for, and their suggestions for doing so. And then finally on this slide, join a writing group. Um, that's one thing that I did when I was a junior faculty member, I started a uh, peer mentoring group. And one of the things we did, we um, kept, we if we didn't write together, some of us were in the same field, but others, we just kept each other um, accountable. And that's a big thing with writing. Um, if you have somebody checking, ha or have you written today? How close are you to publishing? If you've got someone to help you stay accountable for your writing, then um, you'll, chances are you'll be more apt to think, go follow through and get your writing published. Develop an organization system. Um, this one is what I use. Um, there are many more out there, but I have something that I've submitted, something in progress, and then something that I'm thinking about writing. And if this says something. Usually I have one or two things submitted. Um, two to four things in progress. And then I'm always trying to think of something else to do um, when I have time or the next time um, I start a new project. So don't just have one thing, maybe your first one, have it and follow it through. But if you get serious about writing, look back over all your class projects, even the ones you didn't think about publishing when you were doing it. And um, uh, go back and see how you can work on it and build it up while you're working on the one that you're working on now. So if you're serious about writing, there are always ways to do it. And it's not so very stressful because you've got um, projects and papers um, previously that you can use. Um, identify potential journals and outlets for every article that you're writing. Look at similar articles and model that. Um, you can use it as a model for your own manuscript, something that you like and you think went really well, then you can um, model yours around it. Be familiar with journal eight guidelines. And when anytime you're looking at journals to submit to, um, make sure, are they going by APA? Usually they've all, I think by now they've all moved to the seventh edition, but um, some, there are some areas that use um, other formats. So make sure you know and don't submit an APA to one that um, wants a different one. Talk to the editor. As I said, send an email to them and ask them, hey, are you interested in this? Oops. And then um, keep a file on all your manuscripts hard copies and computers, and then organize your references by topics and keep them handy. Schedule writing into your day or week or, and year. And this is always the first thing. When I take on new students um, for dissertation, I get them to make a schedule for that semester. You've got to schedule your writing and make sure that you, you are doing something towards your writing. I would say every day, but, you know, sometimes maybe three days a week or, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Make a schedule because if you have a schedule and it's by your computer, you're more likely to follow it than if you just say, well, I'm going to write and don't have the schedule. So make a schedule. When you stop writing something that you're working on, make a note to yourself what you need to do next. Otherwise, when you come back to it, you'll have to go back and reread and try to figure out what you need to do next. So always when you're writing and when you stop, make yourself a note so you'll know just where to come back and pick it up. 
All right, for those of you working on a thesis or a dissertation, your dissertation contains more than one article, as I said earlier, decide how to divide it. Um, focus on brevity because um, I know when I get students and I start really looking at their writing, a lot of times we seem to wanna to put as many words in a sentence as we can. And that's not the way you need to do for your dissertation or for articles. So focus on brevity, understand the stylistic differences in the um, dissertations. And I think I heard Dr. Keller talking something about that. And then uh, always address, address methodological concerns, because if your meth method section is weak, then a lot of times you get no farther than the first review because your methods has to be um, solid. All right, and back to the prepare for and accept rejection, then persevere. Always respond to a rewrite and a resubmit. If they say, if you will rewrite this with this, these edits, um, we may, we'll publish. Well, definitely jump on it. Don't feel bad that they have told you you need to rewrite. Do it. Rejection is normal. Be prepared for it. Submit your first rejection to another journal um, with or without revising it and just see what the second journal says, because often journal editors are looking for different things. So again, that research before you um, publish researching journals is very important. Ask for help. Write, 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 and then never give up because everybody experiences rejection in their writing at some point. So don't give up and push forward. All right, we're to the end. Um, are there any questions? Nobody, don't be shy. Come on. Well, I guess, Dr. Griggs, that means that you did such a good job explaining it that they got it very clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Um, as I said, this was just a, um, you know, a generic type, you know, for your writing. I wanted everybody to understand that there's a lot you can do before you actually submit a paper. You need to um, research the journal articles that you're, I mean, the journals that you're interested in. And certainly something that's really good for graduate students is to sign up to be a reviewer for journals that are out there. Um, and that will, the more you read, the better you'll write. The more you write, the better you'll write. So there are a lot of things you can do to prepare pre having your um, paper ready to submit.